What does personalizing instruction to change the impact of ADHD in the classroom mean? Hi there, Marian Busfield here from Engaging Curiosity. I support teachers like you with classroom management strategies and resources to empower you to calm the chaos, renew student engagement, and reclaim your personal time away from planning. Mitigating the academic impact of ADHD involves adopting personalized approaches that cater to diverse learning needs, which aligns with Dr. Hallowell's insights from his book, ADHD 2.0. So I draw my understanding from the work of Dr. Edward Hallowell. He's an American psychiatrist, speaker, New York Times best-selling author of 20 books and a podcast host. He specializes in ADHD and he has founded the Hallowell ADHD Centers. His experiences personally with the impact of ADHD in his life every single day, and he has also worked with countless individuals with ADHD through the Hallowell ADHD Centers, which I mentioned he founded. Acknowledging both the individual strengths and challenges of students with ADHD is fundamental to crafting effective teaching strategies. Implementing differentiated instruction allows ed educators to tailor their approaches based on students' unique learning styles. These methods accommodate diverse preferences. By providing additional support like one-on-one -on -one guidance through peers or adults or extra resources, these things ensure that students receive the assistance they need. For teacher to be flexible in assessment methods as would occur in a differentiated classroom is key. This allows students to demonstrate understanding through various means. Preventing teachers from being overwhelmed while diversity instruction is essential. The suggestions above can seem like a lot and maybe they are initially but when we really examine what it means to diversify instruction it just means to differentiate instruction. This can seem overwhelming but to start it can be as simple as offering choice boards or a choice between a paper or a digital activity. Providing ongoing observations, discussions and conferences. These options are less formal, but they can still provide a teacher with enough information to gauge a student's progress. Offering choices in types of assignments and using technology can enhance engagement, which is another way of making learning more accessible. All of this changes the impact of ADHD in the classroom. Collaboration with special education professionals facilitates the development of individual educa education programs, which here where I work are called IEPs, they address specific academic needs, but I've also found that by implementing many of these strategies, an IEP has not been necessary. The impact of ADHD in the classroom has been successfully minimized. By embracing personalized approaches, educators are creating an inclusive learning environment that not only recognizes the impact of ADHD in the classroom, but also maximizes the potential for success in each student. Dr. Hallowell's emphasis on understanding and adapting to individual learning styles reinforces the importance of tailoring educational strategies for optimal outcomes, outcomes. And it dovetails completely with the differentiation in the classroom, so it is essentially work you are doing to reach all of your students anyways. For more on this topic, see the links below for my playlist on managing ADHD in the classroom and find the link in my description or bio to download my free classroom management checklist. See you soon. Do strategies to support students with ADHD in the classroom work, you may wonder? Data was collected and analyzed in the 1980s with a student with ADHD case study. This student with ADHD case study was done by an organization called Raising Healthy Children, uh, which I abbreviate to RHC. Hi there, Marion Busfield here from Engaging Curiosity. I support teachers like you with classroom management strategies and resources to empower you to calm the chaos, renew student engagement, and reclaim your personal time away from planning. The participants of the RHC study are now adults with their own children. I find it incredibly encouraging that the follow-up studies and research on ADHD student behavior also shows that the children of the participants showed improvements. RHC provided elementary school teachers with classroom management and instruction strategies, parents with skills to promote opportunities for children's active involvement in the classroom and fam family, the child with social and emotional skills training. I am delighted when I see this list. They start by saying classroom management matters. And when I look at what AD RHC implemented, I see a close alignment with what Dr. Hallowell is suggesting. The recommendations also align with my pillars of classroom management, which gives me continued confidence to share what I share with you each day. That delights me because I know it works from my own experience in my own classroom. 
And so knowing that it is effective with ADH students is encouraging. On a last note, nothing in the RHC document indicates the students were medicated. This is not to say that none of these children received medication, but it does mean that with or without medication, these strategies were necessary and effective. Whether or not a student is medicated is something that is beyond our control. I am not anti-medication. I am all about what is within our control. Classroom management is within our control. You've got this. You wouldn't have watched this far if you weren't looking for answers. You will do it. Just give yourself time, one step at a time, day by day. You have the ability to change the impact of ADHD in the classroom. For more on this topic, see the links below for my playlist on managing ADHD in the classroom. And find the link in my description or bio to download my free classroom management checklist. Thanks for joining me today. I hope to see you soon. Bye now.